Thank you for tuning in to the World Builder's Anvil, episode 240. I have beaten Jeff into submission, and we are doing our second Death Rites episode. Today, we'll be building Death Rites for a culture in Jeff's world. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the muck of Java and build. Welcome back. As always, I'm beaten into submission, Jeffrey W. Ingram. And the infinite avatar, I am Michael Miller. Hmm. Yes, the infinite avatar. The infinity avatar. The consummate avatar. I still got to see that movie, Infinity War. The ultimate of me. avatar. Have you seriously not seen it yet? I, I've not seen that. I've not oh. seen Deadpool yet. It's just been... Uh, see, M- movies have not worked for me. It's yeah, other movie yeah. failure. Yep. J- well, gibberlings make it difficult. So, <laughs> or uh, wait, wait, no, no, I forget, forget the terminology. Wait, wait, don't say it. Uh, uh, fussle butt. Yeah, fussle, well, we've fussle noticed butts. he's actually he's starting to get post fussle butt phase. He's getting into so. gibberling phase. Uh, he's not going full out gibberling. He's not uh, watching correctly. I'm going to try and start watching uh, Japanese movies uh, with him uh, subtitled. That seemed to I think. That's what predicated it in my nephew. So, uh-huh. uh, <laughs> be- I, I watched a funny video today. It was like some person is like on a first date with this girl, and he's like, oh, "I just want to tell you, you know, since we're getting to know each other, that I'm half anime." I'm sorry. What now? <laughs> Both of my parents were were anime characters. So, throughout the video, he breaks into this weird anime stuff. It's it's. If you watch, he does like the poses. Is yeah, like he does still he, shot picture he, kind of responses. Yes, yes, and goes on these weird uh, internal monologues and exposition <laughs> that no normal person would ever say aloud. It, it's it's really really funny, especially if you watch anime. So, hmm. if you've ever seen any, and I I am a, a huge fan of some anime. I don't consider myself an anime person, though. I apologize to. I'm sure there are some anime people who listen. Um, I'm sure there are. I I am I'm kind of all over the place with anime. I watch a lot of animation, and mm-hmm. I watch a bit of anime at this point. I don't watch nearly mm-hmm. as much as I used to, and I find that I've gotten a little snobbish about it. Like mm-hmm. there are certain kinds that I will absolutely watch, and there are certain kinds I'm just not into. Uh, recent episodes we had Matt Bannock on, and Matt mm-hmm. and his wife Jenny are crazy huge, 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 huge anime buffs. They watch way more. Like, I thought I watched a lot of anime back in the day. Mm-hmm. They got me beat, like, crazy. And they were like, oh, you got to watch this thing. It's got this moment in it that is, like, our favorite moment in anime ever. And because they're such aficionados, I thought, oh, I'm going to love mm-hmm. this. And then I watched mm-hmm. it, and I was like, eh, I didn't like it, like, barely at all. And yeah. what, what I realized is that they have watched so much that they mm-hmm. have seen so much that they can see the beauty in these really small moments, and I'm not there. Um, mm-hmm. For me, that's like general cinema. Like I can yeah. watch a really small thing in a movie and be like captivated by, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a, an instance, a moment, a scene, a delivery, and that like can make a whole movie for me. And that's where they are with anime, I, and I'm just not there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we're talking death rites today, and Mm -hmm. we have a list of questions that we're going to go through. So if you want to build death rites for your world, this is kind of a tutorial. Where do these questions come from, Jeff? Uh, Just the ones I've come up with over time. And, I mean, usually if I'm doing this, you know, it's like sometimes, like, other questions will pop up, and I will will go down a different route. But these are sort of just very common questions I like to ask myself to get the juices flowing over things that I think are important. So if you go back to the death rite episode... I think it was uh, three episodes ago. Uh, it'll be linked in the show notes for this episode. If you go to the show notes in the description or in the lyrics, if you're on a player, uh, it'll have a link to the show notes right there. Well, just to make sure. Or go to Garduel.com, and uh, it'll be the latest podcast if you're listening to it when it came out. Just to make sure I'm not talking out of turn, we're not just going to go through the questions We're act- and talk about them. We're actually going to build one today. This is a build episode. Well, we're building one off of the questions. So really, but it is a build. My point is, it's a build episode. As it's a, po- a build, as we have questions to, to go yeah, off okay. of, um, and 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 wherever it takes us. So 
All right, cool. Do you, the, I think for me, the big starting point is, do you know what culture we're going to be working with here? Yes. Okay. Yes, that, that is important. You, you, you need a culture to work with when you're building something or, or else the questions actually wouldn't work. Uh, <laughs> so this will actually be for the Bedrakum culture. Uh, I do not have a death rite for them. Cool. The well, only thing I know is, me, is not bur- burial. Tell, tell um, me and obviously the audience a little bit about the races of Bedrakum culture and what their general tenets are. Well, Bedrakum culture is typically a human-centric culture. There are some other uh, groups that get mixed in over time. There are some elves, uh, but they actually don't follow Bedrakum religion. Um, there are some orcs that do follow Bedrakum religion um, uh, that live uh, uh, in the kingdom uh, in the period of time that we're, we're set in. Uh, actually, there, uh, yeah, there are elves at this point. Probably, uh, the elves kind of come in a little bit after the kingdom form. So I'm not sure if I, I've, on my timeline, the elves exist there yet. But they never sort of uh, start following the Bedrakum, uh, uh religious rites. Uh, they're very uh, isolated from the other uh, uh, people in Bedrakum. Uh Now, uh, uh, is largely human. Um, they they have a pantheon of gods. Uh, however, um, uh, and they are gr- like great gods. So th- like they aren't regionally based. Now, some uh, uh, regions have little minor deviations on the gods, but uh, they have sort of a strict pantheon like you think of like as Olympian style gods mm-hmm. um, or Valhalla style gods, uh, big gods that sort of rule above the world and rule the world. Uh, so they're... Uh, they, they figure most people worship their gods either by the wrong name and in the wrong way, or they're, they're not worshiping anything. Uh, maybe it's a powerful evil spirit, uh, probably one of the evil spirits. The Bedrakum religion is broken into three courts. Uh, there is a good court um, uh, led by uh, uh, Bed- uh, 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 Bed- uh, Dracus. And actually, the, the kingdom of Bedrakum is actually the followers of Bedrakus. That's actually sort of the meaning of the name of Bedrakus, is there's a god Bedrakus, and he is a god who is often left to the idea of um, uh, sort of like personal defense um, and defense of your home, your hearth. Uh, and he is sort of the chief god of the Bedrakums. Uh, there are, are like gods of war and stuff like that, too. They used to be more important, but in this time period, not as important. Uh, so the idea of uh, they're much more worried about defenses than offenses uh, in general. They're worried about sort of what they own. Um, uh, the idea of hearth is very important as well, too, um, in, in Bedrakum religion. But it's definitely a, a pagan religion. There are several gods. Uh, there's a, a good court, which sort of... Uh, they look over humanity. They, they help humanity through and up into a p- possibly good afterlife. Um, and that's kind of the first question is sort of what is the afterlife like? And essentially it's a hunting field. And um, now warriors go in to, um, to a great hall. Uh, it's not quite like Valhalla. They don't go out and battle every day. Uh, but it's essentially more of a happy hunting grounds kind of idea where uh, it's a, it's, it, uh, the afterlife is a land, land of plenty. So uh, the, f- you know, the farm yields are very good. It's similar to Earth, but there's never famine. There's never disease. There's never death. Um, well, if uh, it's an afterlife. Yes, it is afterlife. And there is a bit of a journey to get to it, I think. I don't know that part of it. Uh, but I assume there's something you have to do to get there. And it, it's probably in your everyday life. So it probably is a journey you take during your life to earn your way into the afterlife. Um, uh, is what I'm thinking, but I'm not settled on anything with that. But it's this idea where essentially it's very similar to where you live, but there's just no problems. You know, there's, there's never a shortage of what you need. Um, there's always plenty. Um, and it's important to get there. Now, there are evil gods that will try and derail and destroy you. Um, and there are also neutral gods that are sort of in between. There is an idea of an apocalypse where the good and evil gods uh, go um, will come together and fight a war. And depending on where the neutral gods sort of fall into that war will end up shaping what the next version after the apocalypse of the world will look like. So it's a circular... 
um, it's a circular religion where there is a beginning and an end, um, but the apocalypse isn't the final end. It's just the beginning of a new, uh, a new version of the same thing where they believe everyone will be reborn, but only after the apocalypse. And uh, so there is kind of a reincarnation, but that's not really what they're worried about. They're worried about getting to the happy afterlife. And when the cycle starts over, it all starts over. They won't remember anything. And then people are, are born pretty much probably in the same sequence. I don't know. The Bedrakens aren't a philosophical race, so they probably haven't overthought out what happens after a new cycle begins. Because to them, if the apocalypse would come, it would be the end of the world. So, uh, there is, so th there's a war that happened at the beginning of this cycle, which was the end of the last war which is kind of what created all the mountains and all of the valleys are from uh, the gods fighting and knocking each other over. The Bedrakim themselves believed they came from the land of the purple grass, is what they called it. And they were brought on the chariot by Drac, uh, by, by, uh, by, by Drac uh, to uh, the field of Drac, which is up near where the city of Bedrakis was formed at. And really it's kind of the first area they settled down from being nomadic. Um, as a people and started kind of having a history. Uh, so uh, that's sort of the basics of the culture. Uh, like I said, it's like largely human. There are orcs in this period of time because this is past the time where the orcs have invaded and then the humans have uh, rebelled and sort of uh, taken most of the land back from the orcs. But there are orc peasants behind. Uh, a few lords, but not too many typically second-class citizens, but most of the ones there sort of follow Bedrakum teachings. Um, but there we go. Well, already then, I think we're ready to get into questions. Yeah, we're ready to get into questions, and we kind of got into the first one here a little bit. Um, what does the culture believe that happens after death? If you've led a good life, you will get into uh, an Elysium style place, a, a, you know, a perfect version of the world uh, where a higher version, and it's, it's an outer plane version. They, they really don't believe it's part of this pl uh, planet. It's another realm, you know, or another um, existence where you go to and uh, heroes go to a certain hall uh, to celebrate uh, their glories and, Everyone feasts and everyone has plenty and they, they still farm, but it's like you go out, you look at the field and it just grows. Um, okay. I was so, going to say, cause if it's like a, like a hunting ground, how do people feel about it? There? Well, I, I say it's like that, but it's, it's just more, it's just a land of plenty. I, I was just going to use the very same yeah. term. I was going to say, is it yeah. like a land of plenty? Cause if you've got somebody that's yeah. like a passive farmer his entire life, I'm not thinking he's going to be like, Oh, this is great. I'm, I'm hunting now and I, I, I can't mm -hmm. hunt anything. <laughs> well, most of the farmers will actually hunt to supplement oh, yeah, the food. Of course, of course. Yeah. I, you know, in the, at this tech level, I'm sure. But I'm just using that as yeah. – I was just using that mm -hmm. as an example. Like if there was somebody that would – like a scholar yeah. or, or whatever. You know. It's it's really a land of plenty idea. Um, and essentially it's it, – if you do the right things, you make the right sacrifices, you live your life in the right way, which is very much the way the Bedrakens work, you earn your way into. Um, and if you follow the wrong gods and you listen to the wrong advice – then you are destroyed. You don't go to hell. Um, actually, yeah, let's have you go to hell. Um, you just created hell. I just created hell. There's okay. probably hell. There, there's evil gods, so there's a there's is a, there there's a, a, a center bastion for them. Is too. there any way to get out of hell? No, no, absolutely not. No, no, no redemption. No, no. Uh, the living can do something to get you out. Because what happens? I think at the end there is a great war. Uh, which is the apocalypse between the good and the evil. Of course. And so the people who've died and are in their grounds form the armies for the gods. Okay. So they will do one last fight with the gods. Fair enough. Um, but it's it's a much more equal playing field to think about than like Greek gods where they're like, you know, humans are pestilence mm -hmm. <laughs> that are fun for like uh, entertainment purposes only. Okay. So... The land of plenty, and do you want to? I mean, do you want to get into what the hell is? Because I mean, I suppose you don't really need to know exactly what it is to create the death rites. No, yeah, I, I don't need to know what it is. It's probably involves sand. 
yes, it probably would involve sand. Salt, salted time. earth, maybe. Salted earth, sandy. Uh, you can't grow anything. There's nothing there. You uh, Etern- starve or Etern- wither. I was about to say internal hunger. Well, because if you withered in the afterlife, like the point is that you're, you'd always be suffering. I guess mm-hmm. you know, yeah. always hungry. Never, you know. Even if you can find something to eat, it's not going to satisfy. And I would think malicious spirits would come back as like ghoul or zombie or ultimately skeleton style undead, which are ravenously hungry, mm. but can never be satiated. Mm. So they would eat any, anything they came across. Kind of. A plague of locusts on steroids because that would involve people and livestock and everything. Kind of. Homes. Well, probably not homes. Kind of. Every living thing. Churches. Ducks. Small rocks. <laughs> um, sounds like me on this diet I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a good diet. No, actually, I'm doing really good. Um, Sarah, Sarah had a um, a thing yesterday, so I got home. Uh, I tried to get home as early as I could, and she had to fast all day because she had to have some blood work done. So I, I was like, okay, if you're going to do that, then as soon as we go and get your blood drawn – I'll take you out to grab something to eat. And she's like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, she was all excited about it. So I was like, yeah. So we ended up going to Moe's. Mickey D's. No, well, Moe's, which is one of my favorite. I love Moe's. Me too. Yeah. It's one of my mm-hmm. favorite places. And I didn't get anything. I didn't get anything. And I wow. went home and I ate what I'm eating now. And I was good. But there are days. <laughs> there of are course. days that my, my willpower wanes. and uh, But I'm, I'm doing good. I'm losing weight, so that's a good thing. Mm. Um, anyway, uh, is the afterlife here or somewhere else? And you've, you've already answered yeah, this question. Yeah, I think question. I've already answered that. And just quickly to respond to it again is it is on a different realm of existence, a different plane, whatever you want to call it. Uh, next question is, what should the survivor do once a person dies? Uh, I, mean, I think there's this? very little regard for the body, and there's a fear of the uh, people who are evil coming back and eating you. Mm-hmm. So I think they burned them. This Does is lo- so so so. There's a genuine fear of the bodies. Yeah, if you don't treat your dead right, um, you know, if you screw up, uh, you know, if they didn't lead that good life, if they didn't make it in, they might be one of those things coming back, in which case their body would still work. They would come back to eat you. Okay, so remember, the so, battlefield is here on on our world. So we need to our duel. We so you need to establish a couple things because you're almost creating a contradiction here. So mm-hmm. you're saying that there is an afterlife, there's a good place to go there's a bad place to go Mm -hmm. and you're also saying that potentially Mm -hmm. i.e a prior one of our prior death rights episode that Mm -hmm. if a malignant like if you don't do the right things to a body Mm -hmm. and you don't treat the the dead the right way then their malignant malignant malicious whatever word you want to use spirit may come back to haunt the living so this isn't quite the same it needs its original body to do it, but that means i.e. the burning. But that means that they won't be in the hell or in the heaven. That means they'll be the, able to come back into the body. So you need to clarify why and that how means, that can happen. Well, well, uh, if if they're evil, they come back withered and ravenous into their original body. So 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 if the person who died is evil, regardless of how they or body is treated. But that's in the end times. So the thing is, it might not come up right now, but it might come up when you're still alive, or maybe it's when your children are alive and you've passed. But there's a fear that those buys will come back up if they weren't the good person that you thought they were. Um, so, okay, so so a fear of a body might only pertain to someone you genuinely think is a bad person. But if it's a no, good, if it's a good person, but you're releasing the spirit too. So the thing is, you're letting the spirit go. So that's why you burn the body. Either way. So it's like you're a spirit up in the other realm. So you can pass to the other realm. Okay. So you need to get so, the spirit form. And there's a, a, a fear that the body might come back in a negative way. So it's just safer to d- destroy it. Okay. So you're you're making me think of a whole bunch of different things now, which is fine. But mm-hmm. if, if, if body prep is going to consist of immediately destroying the body by burning. No, I, I think there'd probably be some kind of purification ritual to... Uh, to make sure that your body separates. Well, your, you can still you separate. can still do things after the mm-hmm. burning. My thought is that if you 
want to go that way, which I like the idea. I like it. It's like, okay, Mm -hmm. it's important that we burn the body quickly. That way, there's no chance of them coming back because there's no body for them to grasp onto. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily because that that there's a need to do it mm. the fear of not doing it like people it would, would be worse pe- yeah, I, pe- I kind of agree pe- with that, people yeah. would still want to handle the body because of the urgency to to, to burn it so it's yeah, not so, so I, I would think it would be burned and then you do all the rituals to make sure they pass through the good way right but what's left over is ashes and mm-hmm. maybe bones and maybe some stuff so you can add a lot of things to be done physically with that yeah. stuff mm-hmm. okay and and they don't memorialize the the bodies. They would probably disperse them. Um, so it would probably there'd probably be a ritualistic area to disperse people mm-hmm. in. Um, you know, probably uh, they have uh, holy sites um, which you would probably have to travel to. So you'd probably actually collect up remains for a while, mm-hmm. and then annually you're traveling to your local uh, holy holy area, which is outside of any settlements. Mm-hmm. To uh, uh, disperse of your ashes there. Um, is it wrong to... Well, if you're going to disperse the ashes, they're going to be spread out anyway. Because uh, what I was thinking is fun things to be done with the ashes, i.e. making some type of ink or paint or um, uh, or, or or taking the ash and putting it into something like, you know, like mixing it into a certain area of your own land so that your, your ancestors are always a part of your land. You know what I mean? I know what you're saying... But they're not as big on ancestors as like other cultures. Right. So it's like because when you die, if you've lived the good life and they've lived the good life, you you reunite anyway. Is this helpful uh, for me to keep shooting random ideas yeah. out? Or okay, oh, almost definitely. Okay, because I, I was gonna say I don't want to keep shooting stuff out there if you're just gonna go. Nope, doesn't fit. Nope, doesn't fit. <laughs> so you uh, know, uh, it's fine for me to say that to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, but I think the idea is. They'll be reunited with them again in this happier place with all of their ancestors. So the here and now for them, it's about surviving and taking care of the family that's here. Mm-hmm. And then later on, you, you know, if you live that good life, you get to to re, reunite with all of your loved ones from the past. Uh, and you'll meet the ones from history and all that stuff. So stories are probably told. But I think the ashes are more like take it to a holy ground. And once again, it's like one of those things like maybe you're on the line. <laughs> so maybe like the holy ground will help get you over into the good place. Uh, so uh, I don't think they look for per- perfection, but uh, you know it could, because Drac is about protection, uh, hearth and home. It's about taking care of your family, and then by extension, you know uh, the land that you're on, which means the Lord uh, who owns the land and stuff like that. Obviously, kind of a convenient one for the lords, really. So let's let's get a little nitty gritty. Person dies. Mm-hmm. Um, what is immediately done to the body? Is there a prayer said over the body once dis- once death is confirmed? And is there anything special to confirm death? Uh, well, I think it's it's sort of eyeballing it. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, if you don't know, you probably stick them with something. Uh, <laughs> the bad news is, uh, you know, up until you get like things to monitor hearts and brain waves, it's actually really hard to be sure. Yeah. Um, so lots of people have probably been buried and and and, uh, and dealt with, uh, you know, uh, who weren't re- quite dead yet. Uh, I'm not uh, dead yet. <laughs> yeah, close enough. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I I think uh, probably uh, once they're confirmed dead, they're probably taken uh, to a spot, uh, you know, uh, uh, close to wherever the family would uh, burn burn a corpse. Um, and, uh, j- just to more of a, for storage purposes, there would probably be a ritual done at that point, mm-hmm. uh, whether it be a prayer or something, you know, uh, the family would do to help push them. Like I said, it's given that little extra mojo to make sure that one, they don't come back right now and eat you. But, but more importantly, if you're on that line where you're maybe not, not quite into the good place, maybe it gets you over that hump. Is there clergy? Or clerics, uh... not not in the traditional sense. Now there are two. Technically, there are two churches. Okay, and there's um, uh, there is a, like kind of a reformed version, which is more like what we think of churches, where there's actually sort of local temples and a priest and that kind of stuff. Most of the peasantry and, and common folk don't 
pay attention to that at all. So they, they wouldn't. Follow, so they wouldn't call one in if somebody died. They would not call one of them in at all. Okay. Uh, there are seers and there are holy people, but in, in Bedraka religion, it's the way you live and deal with your life. They would. The holy person would come in. You know, on that annual pilgrimage to wherever your local uh, holy ground is to dispose of um, the, the ashes that you do have. Um, and at that point, there would be probably another group ritual uh, for everyone there to, to help get them over. But um, the holy people, typically, there might be a zero in your community. Hmm. Um, there might be someone uh, that's a seer. Those are a little bit more common. But your actual holy people, typically, they, they live in a little bit more re- remote areas that are holy, um, which is not around where people live. So somebody dies, poke them with a stick. What what is then done with the body? Do is there? Do they wrap the body? Do they do they disrobe the body of their clothing? Uh, they would probably do they clean? Leave. Do they clean the body? They would they would probably if there's like uh, a mess they would clean it, but as a mess. Uh, I don't think they ritualistically prepare the bodies mm-hmm. um, like as a, a a purification ritual. They probably would dress them in good clothes mm-hmm. to make sure they have something good. You know when they go across. Um, they probably would not burn goods with them Mm -hmm. because they don't outside of clothing, um, because they'll have better versions wherever they get anyway. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to put you in your Sunday best essentially. So when you show up, you don't look like a total slag to everyone who's already there. Do you burn, um, do you burn your, uh, people on your property or is there a communal burning place? Uh, there's probably a communal burning place. Um, okay. So like in each little village area, um, whatever the most populated part of the area is, which, you know, is typically a village, uh, there would be for city areas, it would probably be outside of the city. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the cities are large enough, there might be some inside of like like a city like uh, Klein Forest High or High Wall, same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, there would probably be like, areas in each of the quarters to, to do that as well. Uh, just because that city landmass wise is gigantic. If not a, if no clergy, is there some equivalent of an undertaker that would help the families in this task? Uh, probably in cities, but not out in the, not outside of cities. And the cities are just because of the, the, the volume. population that, and, and there's a volume and stuff like that. There's probably a place you can go uh, to deliver the body to be disposed of for you. If you can afford it. Um, I was going to say, that sounds like a rich man's task. It's more of a rich man's task. Um, the ashes would be returned to you. <laughs> I'm sure they're always the correct ashes. Who give you um, a- ashes that you can pretend were your mother. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Crackle, crackle, crackle. Crackle, crackle, crackle. <laughs> um, and, and, and then you you would still, you know, if you're rich enough, you'd maybe pay someone to go do it. But eh, typically when it comes to death, you typically t- take care take of Take care of your own, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So poke with a stick. Uh, dress in their finest outfit, uh, mm-hmm. take off any valuables they may have because they don't need them. You know, Papa's nope. be- Papa's best knife can go to the sun. Mm-hmm. Um, take them to the local uh, burning place. And what is that? Like, is it... Uh, oh, is, is it Okay, so is there... My, my thought is, is there some type, like, in a perfect world, you'd have a nice flat rock... That you can burn mm-hmm. them on, so you can gather the ashes easily after the fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, it would uh, probably be uh, if you have a good rock local, they might do that. Uh, if they don't, uh, Dirt the pit. preference would be wood. Uh, some places don't even have wood, um, and they would be more reliant on like the little bits of wood they can get, but more more over uh, uh, hay mm-hmm. and straw okay. that's been right. dried. Um, and it would take, unfortunately, a lot of I was going to say, yeah, they would have to save mm-hmm. save mm-hmm. up quite a bit to burn a body. Would mm-hmm. – uh, well, I guess they probably wouldn't do that. I was going to say in j- just, you know – Well, what they would probably do in that scenario is they would probably create like a – they would dig out a little hole so that the little bit of wood they could turn – they could use to turn into coals mm-hmm. and put the body on coals and mm-hmm. let it um, – and just bury it in coals essentially. Yeah. Uh, not coal, but, you know, like charcoal or something like that. Um, okay, so then body burns, uh, mm-hmm. prayers said over the body, and if so, how do they know these prayers? Uh, because they've seen it every time someone in their family has died up until that point. 
Um, so there's lots of rituals that bedrachims do in their everyday life. Mm-hmm. And um, for these types of scenarios, there would probably be a sacrifice as well um, of preferably uh, um, a small game um, type of animal or like uh, a chicken uh, size animal. If you're poor, if you can, if you can get to that, that's what you pay for. Um, you might take some of the food you're doing. Uh, a lot of times that food is cooked, but then distributed. Uh, it's kind of the ashes going up, um, or the, the smoke going up is the sacrifice. And then the food left behind would be consumed by the locals. Um, but that would be done if they had an animal to live kill, they would do it because the blood is very important. Um, it's like they would take blood from animals when they plant their fields and they would sprinkle it in with the seeds, uh, bloods connected to life with them. So, uh, in the same way they would, they would probably sacrifice to the gods there, um, let a little blood out and, um, and then cook, literally cook the food. And that would be sort of like the feast for when the person dies. All right. I'm trying to think if I have any other any other interrupting questions before mm-hmm. we continue on yeah. the list. Um, <clears throat> well, do you, um, based on everything that I've asked, do you have an interrupting thought before we go to the no. next question? Well, I just kind of throw my interrupting thoughts in with my Well, right. I just want to make sure that we're not forgetting something that's well, obvious, you know, because I feel like... Well, we could. I, I feel like it's a pretty quick ritual so far. Like it's, I feel like. It, it, well, time wise, it's not really. Well, think about it, so you well, know, time like, time wise, no. But I just, I, I, I don't know. I I think there just should be more to it. But you know the culture better than I do, so. But remember, it's also a cultural thing. So. Well, I know, I know, yeah. and some some cultures are not as big on it as as others. So. Well, it's important, but it's important, you know, to get dispose of the body quickly. And then it's like it's like if a parent's traveling, you probably would not wait for them to get home to do this. Mm. So like you know, if the mother's died while the father is away, you wouldn't wait for the father to return home before you got rid of the mother. Mm-hmm. It, it would happen the same way it would happen mm-hmm. normally. And if it's only little kids there, there are probably some others not too far away that would help them. Is there a um, is there a grieving? Um... Yeah. Like, I, uh, I, I think so, you know. I mean, as opposed uh, to just, oh, hey, we're sad and we're going to deal with it internally and we're going to be sad because, you know, Papa's gone. Or is there actually like like sitting Shiva or, you know, some some mandated or pseudo mandated like grieving ritual? I think I think there's a grieving ritual that would take place from the time um, the person dies until the ashes are disposed of. Um, okay. That uh, which is a variable amount of time, uh, of course, because they might they might get to because typically place both families can only afford to go once a year. Okay, um, typically in winter when there isn't food in the ground, mm-hmm. uh, when there's food there they can't go um, unless they have a really large family where they could handle it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, I think f- until the ashes are disposed of, <clears throat> there are no extras in the. So there are things you have to do. How about and in, that's all you're allowed to do. How about something simple in the name of hearth and home that they they set a table setting for them? I like that. They continue like to that, set that a table make, that setting. Sense, for them. That would make a lot now, of sense. Obviously, not uh, you know like they wouldn't waste food and, and fill their plate, but they but their plate is there. Or they would probably take some of their food and and put it in their plate, and then when it's done, it would be eaten before. Um, or yeah, it would probably be, or it might be actually put into the hearth for uh, the god of the hearth. <laughs> or they do fill the plate, and everyone takes a bite. Hmm. Yep. Hmm. I. Uh, I mean, a lot. A lot of times, you know, it's the act of cooking the smoke rising up, which acts as the mm-hmm. um, sacrifice itself, and <clears throat> the food is where you get all the feasts from. You know, because that's all the the sacrificed animals being eaten after the sacrifice. Just spitballing. Yep. Um, okay. <clears throat> well, I think we're ready to move on to the next question then. Yep. Uh, so uh, what should survivors do once a person dies? Yep. What, what of, happens if they do not do these things? I think I, I think if you don't do them, then that sort of goes against you for getting into the, your afterlife. Ooh. Uh, Exactly. So if you don't take care of your loved ones, 
um, that's sort of a strike against you to get in. And the problem is no one really knows where the line is. You know, it's right. not like, you know, the, there are 10 commandments, you know, there's like you, you, you do the things you're supposed to do culturally, mm-hmm. all the cultural, uh, norms are things that you do. Um, uh, and you, and each have their own little rituals attached to them. See, um, this make in the way you perform them. This makes me think of like creating a story where you know you've got a, a farmer and he's got two young kids, and on the second kid, mom died in childbirth, so they're like five and three respectively, mm-hmm. and dad has a heart attack out in the field. Mm-hmm. You know, dad's a big man and they're little. Mm-hmm. How do they? You know, how do they manage? How, they do, how do they manage yeah. their ritual without screwing themselves over? If they even, well, the good, I mean, and I mean, the they, they, they is, might, they would probably at those ages, they probably wouldn't even know exactly what to do. You know, they wouldn't know exactly what to do. Of course, they wouldn't. Uh, <clears> but <throat> the thing is, they typically, they, you know, uh, they're they're just they're exiting tribalism at this moment for you know in the smaller rural communities, but they still typically live around others. Mm-hmm. So it's like for defensive purposes, you know, so they wouldn't be like too. Today re- they wouldn't you, be too remote. They wouldn't be too remote. Um, you know, they would probably be within walking distance of a village um, uh, f- for most people. But that would still make an interesting story. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. uh, so what else happens if they don't do the ritual or don't do it properly? Um, well, well, I think it's really just a strike against your afterlife. Um, you know, and, and of course, if they're at the edge, the person who died, that might encourage them to, to go – naughty and and try and come back at some point Mm -hmm. too so uh, is it possible that you might maybe i'm not having all of your gods memorized like maybe mm -hmm. you have a bad uh, a bad god that encourages the souls to return to their body and like oh no there's good you can go back like oh yeah you can you can go see your family right now yeah go ahead and then they come back and they're like ah and they eat their family you know Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, and it would definitely be assumed if there was ever like a scourge of undead that it was because the locals weren't properly taking care of their dead, mm-hmm. even if that wasn't what was happening. And so like if you needed outside interdiction and they would come in, they'd probably kill everyone. Regardless of whether or not they were. Well, because obviously the people here aren't taking care of their dead and this is just going to be a problem again. So we'll just kill everyone. <laughs> That's awful. We've come to help. So, We've come to help ourselves. <laughs> yes. You all die. <laughs> But it's Bob. He's the dead one. <laughs> yeah. This this family has to go, and that would even probably happen too. Like, I mean, like look, if Bob's trying to eat you, he's obviously got a reason for that. And you know, I don't want to question the supernatural powers that brought him back. So we're just gonna we're just gonna err on the side of safety. Better safe yeah, than sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like the Bedrakum had a history of um, of actual uh, human sacrifice that's been gone for centuries at this point, mm-hmm. um, but. Um, that's probably the closest they still come. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, Is there a benefit for them doing it correctly? Like they, they, uh, you know, if they make sure to do, you know, dot, dot all the I's, cross all the T's in the rituals that. But Drachum life is all about doing the right things. The things mm-hmm. that your culture says are the good things to do. When you follow those, Let's, those are the things that get you into the afterlife. W- w- let me ask a question about that. Is mm-hmm. it morally what is right or what is uh, expected? They, and it could be both, but I'm just saying. In Bedrakan culture, it's almost both. So okay. taking care of your family, God of protection, hearth, and home, uh, <laughs> you know, is expected, but it's also moral. Mm-hmm. So um, the, the two things are very tightly, your life, your job in life, when you fulfill that, that is you being a moral person. Fair enough. Um. <clears throat> are there conditions that uh, change the right? So, like, if they die under certain circumstances or, uh, I don't know. There's... If they are known to be a bad person. What would you do if they're a bad person? They're, they're still burned. Okay. Um, because you don't want the body coming back. Um, ooh, but beyond ooh. Th- it, is there maybe two different places? There's one place where you scatter the ashes of loved ones, and there's a different place because you don't want to taint that area. And there's a different mm-hmm. place where you drop the bad people's ashes. And if so, who makes that decision? Who, like, if somebody's kind of on the cusp, how do you decide? Usually, if they're on the cusp, you err for that they're a good person because you don't want the strike against you. Okay. For not doing the right thing. Okay. But if if they're just So you a, kind of give them the benefit right. of the doubt if they're on the edge. If they're a bad person, I think you um 
um, you you burn them as soon as possible, and you hide the ashes. Mm. Uh, not not at a holy spot, but you hide the ashes, and it probably won't be as far as away. But it's like an embarrassment thing. Like our 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 black sheep son passed away, and we we, we buried him out in the gorge because we're we're ashamed. Mm. You know that uh, we won't even talk about him. Not anymore. the gorge. You're gonna taint the river water. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Yeah, and then, then like a plague comes down the river one day, and they all blame the people who buried the, their son out there. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Next question. Uh. Well, actually, are there any other um conditions that change the right? Uh, not that I think would make sense for the Bedrakum. You know, well, how how would you change the right other than spreading the ashes uh, elsewhere? Like, uh, would you still do the prayer at the no. point of spreading? No, no, well, you no. just ditch. They, they would get nothing. Nothing. It's 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 like a burn and dump. Okay. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> is there magic, either sympathetic or active, that this belief changes? I, I'm. That's what. Those that, are two different things. Oh, um, is there magic? Oh, is there magic, either sympathetic or active? Uh, I think at the point where they're going to the holy ground, there there would be magic used at that ceremony. Um, whether it's real or not is unimportant. It would be sympathetic style magic. But yeah, tell me what you mean by that. So sympathetic magic is magic where it's a consequence. It's not like a fireball that you create and throw at something. Uh-huh. Sympathetic magic is is like I I I I I take uh, goat's blood and I spread it on my field and it helps my crops grow better. All right. So you believe it's 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 ritual based magic that may not actually do anything, but you believe it. You believe it. Yeah. Okay. And so I think there would be sympathetic magic done at the point of disposal of of people at the holy site. Okay. Uh, to help make sure that they get across and and everything's fine. They're on the they're they're in the happy place. <clears throat> would there be um, let's say somebody is like super attached to you know someone who passed and they wanted to keep some of the ashes? Would that be a big no no? That would be that would be. A really big no no. Real big no no. Okay, and yeah. probably if it, and if it would be a super big no no, somebody probably wouldn't think to do that. They, that oh, I'm sure there are people who do it. Really? Uh, you don't think it, they would? It, it, based on the cultural belief, you don't think they'd just. But assume. remember, for every person who thinks the culture is correct, there are people who do it the wrong way. Some think they're serving evil. Fair enough. Uh, uh, some just think the the way people do it is wrong, hmm. um, and the the cultural norm would say they're evil either way. Hmm. Okay. So, so it it just might happen in that regard. So, yeah. I guess yeah. I was leading to like what would occur to that person. Mm-hmm. What would Once or again, it's or, all... or what if people knew somebody did that? If people knew, did I mention what happens if undead come back? <laughs> so maybe their neighbors would would kill them for doing this. They might. They I would mean, probably, that seems kind of extreme. It, it would probably be a lot of encouragement to get rid of all of the ashes because you're probably a good person and you're making a mistake, and they'd probably right. try and lure you along. Right. But if something else went wrong, like you had a bad harvest, guess who's getting blamed? Mm. The person who they know kept the ashes. At that point, the person is dead. Um, because they're performing evil magic. No, no banishment. They would just um, just kill the person. Uh, it, well, at the point where something bad happened, you're dead. Okay. Um, because and, like, and the they and they, and, and they wouldn't and they wouldn't think that that would be that there were, there's no moral no no to that. Like if if they well think, you caused it. They well, think right. If they think caused, the person yeah. caused it, whether it's mm-hmm. well, even if it wasn't maliciously, you know, like they. You know, like they kept the ashes, but they're a good person, you know, you, but you they did one the devil, bad thing. If the devil tricks you and you serve him, that doesn't lighten the sentence. Okay. You know. All right. Fair enough. So, um, yeah, <clears throat> no. No. I mean, once – if the community determines – and the problem is once you do that and they know, um, any bad thing that happens, whether or not it's from what you did, <laughs> they have you're going to get blamed. to blame you. <laughs> yeah. So the next question you have written here is, does this belief change? And mm-hmm. – uh, and that kind of means over time. Okay. And, and and so at this point, it is different before uh, th- than earlier. There would have um, uh, been uh, uh, nobles specifically would have been interred with 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 uh, items, uh, but they kind of gave up on that years ago when they shifted from the god of war to the god of protection, hearth and home as the chief god, um, and they don't remember doing that, but. Um, 
when that happened, they sort of shifted away from uh, human sacrifice, much more sort of Nordic style. Uh, concubines would join you on the uh, funeral, funeral pyre and stuff like that to go along with you mm-hmm. to make sure that you had someone with you when you got there. Uh, w- uh, willingly or not. <laughs> oh, you would do it willingly. Really? Usually, yeah. Huh. It, it gets you in the good place, right? It gets you in the. Oh, really it's good like place. you got a, You got like a ticket. Like if you hop yeah. on with this guy, it's a golden it's, ticket. It's, That's uh, right. uh, okay, fair enough. So, uh, does the right extend past people? And I'm not sure what you mean by that question. So, so like when you perform the right on the individual, does that help for other people in the past as well too? You know. Okay. So like. Uh, and, and, and the idea is there, like, maybe Uncle Bob is a ghost. <laughs> so so if we do this good now and Bob witnesses us doing this good, maybe Bob can go too. Oh, I, I see. Okay. And I think, no, they don't really believe so much. in ghosts are typically good to them. The, the spirits are, are, are people who've passed on. The evil people come back to bodies. So that's, not, that's, what, I was, that's what I was to about bodies. to say, because it sounds like, it, it sounds like all the there's so much stress. We're putting so much stress in this ritual and, and the, mm-hmm. the importance of burning the body and, you know, doing it correctly that mm-hmm. I, I imagine there would not be a whole lot of bodies around to be occupied by the dead. So that yeah. that could go one of two ways. One, you could say, well, the only time, you know, the, the dead are going to come back and be a pest is if there's a body for them to get into or they need their body. Well, right. But that mm-hmm. also, if, if that is a hard and fast rule, then that means you can't really have hauntings. Oh, well, you could have spirit hauntings, right? Well, that's so what I'm saying. Like, like how ghost. do we want to define that? Like, I mean, you can but, obviously but, but say to them, if there's a ghost like, would not be malicious. It would be it, it would be good because the evil the the evil ghost can't do anything until it attaches to a body. So if there's a ghost activity, so even if it's there's an good. even if there's an evil ghost kicking around, which nobody you, would really you, know about. Your belief about. would be that they're doing bad things to help you uh correct something you're doing wrong. What would they do? What could they do if they have no body? What power like well, it's like a ghost, right? So it's like maybe you trip and fall uh, at the same spot. You get really cold, mm-hmm. uh, like real ghost stuff. I mean, well, that's like, what I'm saying. I'm just asking you to define it. Like, how would they mm-hmm. think we're being haunted because Uncle Bob? We didn't burn Uncle Bob's body well enough. It, or... it would typically be co- coincidental stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but Uncle Bob, if he's a good person, the ghost would come back to help the family. It's because there's something going on that the family needs help with that one of the spirits would come back to help. So, so could they do good things? Uh, they, they could or bad. Th- the bad things they would believe would happen because they weren't listening. Allow me to modify. To my, the good allow me to modify my question. Um, a lot of this is structured in what the living believe occurs. Mm-hmm. I, I'm asking from a world builder standpoint, mm-hmm. standpoint, what, what actually is occurring if there is is can a spirit actually be lingering around and if so can it corporally affect the living world uh not directly think of literally like a ghost in a haunted house okay that is like what happens there obviously there aren't a lot of zombies and skeleton problems in Bedrakis. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the necromancers have nothing to raise. There are sometimes spirits trapped. Corporally, they have a very difficult time directly in, interfering. Mm-hmm. Uh, but sometimes, you know, like that rope just breaks at the r- wrong time. Mm-hmm. More coincidental type of uh, effects would, uh, in the physical world. Could, they have enough juice to in, interact that way. What about psychological? Can they, like, say, inhabit uh, a loved one's dreams? Can they repetitively visit and and, and have have it be like the, the loved one has no doubt in their mind they're definitely being visited by a dead relative? And you're asking about in, in reality, not in Bedrakum culture. Correct? I'm I'm asking... I'm asking within the context of your world. <laughs> well, well, that's what I'm talking about. In, the, in reality, for my world, in quotes, um, in the reality for my world, uh, they can possess people. Okay. Uh, so there is very much they, the living could possibly have confirmation that the dead are hanging about emotionally and psychologically. Yeah. Okay. And it probably happens falsely more than it does in reality. Well, of course. In reality, Pe- people grieving. Very, yeah. And, and it might not even be a undead spirit. It could be like a spirit, 
you know, a, a, a little magic fairy kind of spirit that is also doing it. Mm-hmm. So there are multiple things that, that, that act as spirits. Uh, but dragons don't believe much in spirits, so they would just assume it was a dead relative. All right. What do we got next here? Um, are there variations in the religion? And uh, it says, think Orphic? Yes. What so is- Orphic is a, is a religion we talked a little bit in the Death Rites episode where, um, and you'd see this even in Roman times where uh, they would actually, they did not follow any of the normal practices of, 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 of Romans uh, in funerals. They would... Um, they would give a passport for the dead body. They would bury the body, not burn them. Um, uh, uh, and they believed possessions would travel with them. And it was very much tied back uh, to, uh, to uh, what is the, uh, to, to uh, the, Ro- the Roman uh, Bacchus, to the Greek uh, god of wine, which is tied back to uh, uh, Osiris, which they're very similar in, in, in the way they act. Um, they were killed. They were cut into pieces and disposed of, and they came back. Um, they were gods of different things, I guess, but uh, but a lot of the story behind them is exactly the same. And so there is like a, a passage after life that's much more Egyptian with a Greek influence than uh, Roman or Greek. Um, so uh, they would uh, dispose of their body different. They have nothing that different. Um, now, uh, some of the nobles have started burying themselves with goods again. Um, and, but they start following the new version of the church where it says there's really only one God, and he manifests in different ways, and that's why you see the other gods. Mm. Uh, or, or, or we used to think there were, but that's simple thought. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, but, uh, you're polytheistic? How quaint. Yeah, how quaint little. Oh, how pleasant. That's 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 my slander. You know, you're a very pleasant person. I.e. peasant. I was about to say you can take the L out of that one. That's right. <laughs> so the next two questions you have here, um, I think have been answered, but these are definitely ones that mm-hmm. uh, for the listener they want to want to think about. How complex is the ritual, and does the person have to do something before they die? Oh, oh, oh actually, no. I that second question is definitely not doesn't fit the uh, the how complex I think we've pretty much covered. Uh, I think they're relatively simple rituals. Most yeah. of the dragon rituals are relatively simple because commoners do them and they do them for their own family. Uh, does the person have to do something before they die? Now, does this mean? Uh, it, 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 does, is this question? The grandiose. This is what you should do with your life before you die, or yeah. is this in the final moments? You better do a little thing before you pass. It, it could be either. Um, well, you tell me your uh, world. Well, it it, it varies for Bedrakim culture. Okay, um, uh, it is very much how you live your day to day life. That is that is what you have to do. You have to do you you have to do a, a sacrifice to your hearth every morning. Um, you know, there's certain types of activities that you have to do you have, before you plant your crops, what would, before you what harvest would, your crops. What would qualify as a morning hearth sacrifice? Like literally, mm-hmm. like you have to sacrifice an animal or could it be like what? Most people can't afford it. Well, that's that. what I'm saying. That would that yeah. seemed like that would be a tremendous effort for especially a peasant class. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, I mean, you know, if you could get – and you need something living and it, it could have been just living like it's in their mind living like burning plants. Um uh, will suffice if you're poor. Okay. Now it's assumed that the better sacrifice you could do in the morning, the more benefit you get. Mm. Um, but there's no evidence to support that. <laughs> well, that's beliefs, you know. That's how, yeah. that's how beliefs work. So if you're really wealthy, you would like take like an oxen every night, at, at yeah. <laughs> every every morning, and do, and, and you'd have them killed over your hearth and bleed out into your hearth and, and cook and roast, and you'd probably eat the meat every day. That would be a very expensive lifestyle. Yeah. Yes, but when you're super wealthy before today, when there aren't a lot of different things you can buy, there's only so much you can spend your money on. So it becomes ostentatious. But there aren't a lot of really wealthy Bedrakis. I, I was about like to say, like you'd, you'd have to have like so many oxen to do. That. I mean, even if you were just doing it with chickens, you'd have to have like a chicken factory. Lots of chickens. Yeah, you'd have to have That's a right. big, huge chicken farm to do that every day. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Can the religious ceremony be used for other things? It was a good question. Uh, I mean, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe not for 
for um for the, the dracon but for, this is a great question for, to for, ask the, for in, in general for that's yeah, why yeah. it's one of the questions there in this one i don't see how it would work mm-hmm. <laughs> uh we're gonna burn you for your baptism <laughs> <laughs> baptism by fire. <laughs> uh-huh. Tad, you're supposed to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, I mixed just, it up. Just a little more, just a little more. <laughs> ah! Um All right. Um fear or accepting of death. So does that mean like if yeah. the person and is culturally. It, like is mm-hmm. the per- like if the person is like knows they're going to die soon, is it fear I mean, I imagine that would be person to person, yeah. but culturally. It, 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 but it's it's derived from the cultural thing. And, and and as a culture, there is no fear of death. None. Um, Zero. Well, there's always fear of losing yeah. what you have. Uh, well, yeah. But, but in general, it's an acceptance that I'm, you know, especially if you think you've lived that good life, <laughs> you think you're getting to a place of plenty. So, um, so there's an acceptance that it's time to go back and be with, uh, your family who've passed before you. Fair enough. All right. Does the end benefit the local ecosystem? So this is a good one for people who are not burning bodies. If you're, if like, you're going to chop up bodies and bury them, you Mm -hmm. know, I mean, that would benefit the local ecosystem. Right. Like I like the idea of like, you know, uh, mangling the body and spreading it through the field so it's like, oh, Papa's a part of this farm, and so was mm-hmm. his grandfather and the his and, and father And there are probably that. cultures in my world that would do something like that. Yeah. Not the Bedrachim. And it does not benefit the local ecosystem. Actually, the holy site where they probably dispose of the ashes is probably purposefully um, ensure that like nothing grows there. It's very obvious where that would be. Mm-hmm. So it probably damages that area mm-hmm. um, of the ecosystem. Would they and choose they, it, a damaged area already? Like maybe it's a salt marsh or like would no, they pick? No, they would choose something they considered holy. Okay, and it's, it's usually well, something who, with said, who, said, who says that that couldn't be holy or. If, it, if, it's, it could if, be. if it's going to be... Typically in Bedrachim, it's elevation. If it, because and if it's r- elevation, you can very well get to elevated areas that can't grow stuff very well. You know. Yes, it, and, and all areas might not be, mm-hmm. and there are some that are definitely desolate already. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, but they, wouldn't, there are they some, wouldn't choose that, though. Uh, they might. Uh, it, it depends. Like, where you live, you might not be close to an area like that. Well, I'm just saying, like... You're going to go to your local... I'm saying if they had the option, and they got this this place that's, like, nice in the forest, and they got this other place, Mm -hmm. and they know ahead of time that over the years, they're going to negatively impact that area, might they Well, they don't know that. They don't don't know that. And it would be be a very confined area. Well, of course. Yeah. But there's also the whole idea of... You know, lingering spirits and bad mojo. Like, would they think? But that's the reason why I'd be in a very confined area where the holy people actually do live, where they take sure and make sure that nothing come. That there are no problems. Fair enough. Fair enough. So there. So, so it's like. Uh, so there are um, holy people kicking around where they're going to go dump the ashes, and those people caretake yeah. maybe pray and. Mm-hmm. And that's like I said, where the where the magic would happen at. Okay. Uh, or where the bedrachim believe the magic happens. At. Right. Uh, and that's the last question that you have yeah, written down here. Is there any other questions mm-hmm. that come to mind, like after all the stuff that we've covered? No, I think it's uh, fairly fleshed out. Like I said, it's a simple ritual which makes sense for the culture. Mm-hmm. It ties into the everyday <clears throat> life way their culture works, and 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 they don't go to church, but they do rituals all over their day. Mm-hmm. And like as a, a lay person, an outsider, you might see some things they do and not realize it's. A religious thing mm. like if you know like you have a, a catholic who would go there and maybe they would do like the cross on them before they entered uh you know a door mm-hmm. uh people there would have no idea that was a holy ritual yeah so th- they just like, do, 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 like doing doing uh, uh, a crucifix or, or genuflecting or mm-hmm. and and the better they live their life the better they follow those rituals which is you know one keeping you in your job right so if you're born the son of a farmer you better act like that farmer, uh, that's what makes you holy. Um, you know, as, so it kind of keeps people o- okay with their lot in life in a way too, because that's what gets them to the ex- uh, 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 afterlife, is living your life the way you're supposed to. I want to do this episode again, 
mm-hmm. for a culture that's more extreme because I have mm-hmm. all kinds of messed up ideas that I totally wanted to explore. But mm-hmm. you have a very civilized culture that I didn't get to jump uh, into. I, like, I don't know if they're civilized. Well, it, it, they're it, definitely they're, 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 they're much more civilized than some of the ideas that I wanted to explore. Oh, and okay. it became the, clear. The crap going through your brain. Yeah, yeah. I got some mess up ideas that I think that, mm-hmm. that there's a place in your world somewhere for it. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, r- ritualistic, you know, body dismemberment and mm-hmm. possibly, you know, um, post-mortem cannibalizing and, and spreading. Well, it's interesting. Know. It's like the Orphic religion. There are some thoughts that people were chopped up into pieces mm-hmm. to be like the God who was chopped up into pieces when he was murdered. Um, hmm. So uh, I don't think that was necessarily part of everyone's, but maybe if they were murdered, they would chop them up like the God was. I don't, mm-hmm. there's not a lot known about it. There aren't a lot of writings left behind. Mm. Except they do find the passports once in a while, which are really amazing things. Um, but it's kind of cool because you get this passport that will sort of get you through all the gates on your way, mm. um, which is always good to have. All right. So we're going to leave it off here with the world building task of the day, which can you think one up, Michael? That uh, think let's see here? a good world building task for the day. How about you create Death rites for one of your cultures. Very good. I just kind of go through the questions. Yeah, top of my head. If if things come into your brain, follow the thread. Yeah, look into the look into the show notes. Jeff will have uh, the list of questions for you. Mm -hmm. Yep. What about a a a real world task? A real world task is go love the people who you love, and I mean like with action. Go give them a hug. Give them a kiss. Give them a call. Uh, there's no one. time like the present to love the people you love. Let them know. I love you, Jeff. I love you, Michael. See you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would that. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the mithril's hot.